Dungeons and Dragons has had an explosion of popularity in the last few years. I'm talking about because of its displays in Stranger Things, just also the rise of nerd culture. There's online shows that I've talked about on my channel previously that have helped promote it. And it's even gotten extremely popular in prisons. No, I didn't see that coming, gonna be honest there. But if anyone tries to judge you for playing D&D, just say you learned it in prison that'll put them right in their place. But it's a bit overwhelming trying to pick a tabletop RPG because most people will go up to an experienced D&D player when they want to get started and they say, hey, I want to learn D&D, what should I do? And the response can be, hey, do you want to play D&D? Do you want to play Pathfinder? Do you want to do a percentile campaign? Do you have some kind of homebrew system? And then the person who is interested in playing D&D is going to walk away because they, they don't know what any of that was and they're probably a little confused. And what I can tell you is right now the most popular campaign set I'm aware of is 5e. D&D 5e. And I would just recommend if someone says, hey, what type of campaign are you going for? Just say 5e. Just do that because I'm new and I want to get the most broad, traditional D&D uh, experience you can. And I do truly believe D&D is the way to go. If you are someone who knows you're going to care the most about combat right off the bat, you can go Pathfinder because that is a campaign set with rules that do lean more heavily towards tactical and strategy and combat. So you can say that if you really want to have detailed combat systems, uh, but really, I think everyone should start with 5e. That's just my opinion here. So if you go up to someone who you know is way more experienced and they ask you what kind of campaign you want to play, say 5e. And that should be your introduction if you are someone who wants to try it and know someone who's very into Dungeons and Dragons. Great entry right there. But let's say you're like a lot of people I've met who have never played it and don't know how to get started and don't know anyone who really knows much about D&D. Luckily for them, I was able to get them started. But a lot of people out there don't know people who are into D&D. And it can be confusing when you start looking up all these different tabletop RPGs out there. I've seen someone who wanted to start playing D&D and they ended up playing Zombie Side, which is a good board game, but probably not what they initially thought they were getting into. So for anyone who wants to play traditional D&D with the most up-to-date system that I think is actually quality, I'm very surprised and pleased to say this starter set that you can pick up almost anywhere, including like Target, very much so worth the money and is a wonderful introduction on how to get started in the most common rule set currently out there. And fortunately, this starter set will take care of what I have found to be the biggest hurdle to getting a group started character creation, because a lot of people want to start playing D&D and they really want to get going. They want to learn the rules, get going, and then they sit down to create a character. And that takes two hours and they've completely been wiped of their motivation to keep going. And I understand that because they don't know how to play the game. So creating a character can be extraordinarily taxing. This has you covered. Because this comes with five pre-made characters, human, elf, and dwarf, all different classes, backgrounds, and with backstories filled out, if you're the kind of person who knows right away they're gonna wanna start role-playing the character. I've never been much of that kind of person, but this is perfect for if you're just getting started and wanna start experiencing the game. Grab one of these characters and get going. There's people who are already mad at me in the comment section because they think, no, they should definitely create their own first character. I push against that idea because having someone with no experience create their own character, largely they have no idea what they're doing and they're going to just pick things that they think are useful and end up not being that useful. For example, I was in a campaign with a bunch of lawful good people and someone didn't understand what that meant and when they made their own character on their own time they came in with someone who was like the ultimate liar bad guy and of course that just didn't really go with the group we had. If we had more experienced players we can incorporate that into play but new people aren't going to know how to incorporate like conflicting morals in a group. So that's that's experienced people and I think just starting out with these all right, pretty basic whitewashed characters is the way to go. It also comes with some dice. If you don't have those, you can get started. Uh, a campaign, which is too easy. Probably my biggest criticism with this is the campaign is a bit too easy, but I guess with people just getting started, give them some wins so they feel like they're really accomplishing stuff and learning. And there's some nice hidden gems in here as well. And if you have a DM who's getting started and really takes the time to read this, they can be a really good DM because this will kind of walk the DM through how to handle uh, a lot of just different nice little setups, traps, you know, treasures. This is actually a pretty good introduction for DMing uh, campaign. And the rule book, very self-explanatory and does a good job as well. So I'm surprised to say that this mass market um, put in every Target and Walmart I've been to in the last couple of years, starter set for D&D &D, is perfectly good. And if you're someone who has three people who are interested in getting going, pick this up, 
be the DM or get one of them to be the DM and just go through it. It should take you probably a weekend to get through the whole campaign if you're really sitting down and doing hours and hours a day. Uh, but also the campaigns are designed that they can be done in like an hour and a half, two hours if you really just kind of sprint through them. So I think this is a wonderful entry point. And from there, you can decide where to go. If you're, okay, we really enjoyed this, but we want more heavy combat, maybe next time switch over to Pathfinder. If you thought, okay, keeping track of all the different dice stuff was annoying, uh, from there, just go to a percentiles campaign where you're only dealing with one kind of dice roll and you're pretty much handled. Or if you got the basics and you have someone in your group who's a very much so an ideas guy and wants to create their own campaign with their own rules, go for it, believe in it. Or if you have massive Star Wars fans, go for the Star Wars RPGs that are out there or the Wheel of Time RPG that's out there. Though I will say that that actually wasn't the best. I played that um, and it, it wasn't, it wasn't really well done. Uh, that needs a once over. Pretty much every major franchise out there has their own tabletop RPG. So if it's gonna help all the people care more to play in a Song of Ice and Fire tabletop RPG, I haven't looked it up, but I'm sure it exists. So that's great. You know now how to get started if you've never played before. Pick this up at Target. I'm happy to say it's a good first, we can do this in a weekend, maybe two weekends, set for four to five players. Yeah. Maybe try to get a somewhat experienced DM so they could have more fun with uh, what's going on. Have the person with the most experience be the DM. They can probably lead the campaign in a better direction as a result. But really, outside of that, nice, easy, very easy entry point uh, for everyone to get a hang of the ropes. So, okay, video done. Problem solved. Bye. Yeah, that was a bad joke that probably didn't land, but the obvious thing here is great. I know now how to get started. But how the hell do I find people who want to play D&D? And if we're being realistic, in the day and age we live in, that's one of the hardest parts of getting started with D&D because it's really tricky. We all have lives. We're really busy. We can't get, okay, hours and hours and hours every weekend. That sucks. Now, if you're in high school or college, congratulations, you have a massive advantage. Go to clubs, go to certain groups, hit up the kind of people you know might be interested and you're golden. And people you might not expect be interested might be interested. The crew team in my college played this because more and more people are understanding this is a great game. It's not some, oh, high nerds only. No, this is something where any friend group who has good chemistry that gets together can play this and have a fantastic time. I've seen so many friend groups who are like, we just don't know what to do anymore. We constantly go to bars. If you want a different experience, pick up D&D, &D, give it a go. Worst case scenario, you drop 15 bucks. This is currently on Amazon and you're out $15 and you had a night of having fun with people you like trying to learn a system. That's not the end of the world. You probably spend less on this than you will on your beers. Although I still highly recommend having beer or just liquor when you play D&D, &D. it makes it a lot more fun. But the tricky part comes in when you're an adult in the real world or like me, you've moved to a new city, you don't really know many people. How do you find people to play D&D with? It's hard. There are online places where you can meet people. You can play an online D&D &D campaign. I've never found those to be as satisfying. Uh, I know a couple other content creators who are interested in getting a game going. That sounds like a lot of fun and I might take them up on that offer very soon now that I have somewhat of a human schedule work-wise. But realistically, how can you possibly do that. Well, if you have people in the area who you still know who have a reasonable amount of free time, reach out to them, say, hey, twice a month, I want to get together for three hours and just mess around with this D&D &D starter set and see how we can get going, see if we like it. And I'm sure most of them will say yes, because here's the dirty secret to being an adult. Most people want to go out more and are really excited when people invite them to do almost anything because we live in a world where everyone thinks everyone else is out there doing more stuff than they're doing. So any invitation is usually appreciated. And just to dispel this sexist myth, I have played D&D &D with more women than men. It's not a guy's game, just putting that out there. So feel free to invite some chicks. Now, if you don't have anyone in the area, like me, I just moved to Columbus. I, I, have, I know two people in this city I consider like friends at this point, and I need to figure out, okay, how am I going to design a D&D &D campaign? How am I gonna get it going and have the six people to invite and then cut it down to four when two of them don't work out because either they didn't play well with us and they kind of got too into it or not into it enough, and there was the one guy who just couldn't make it to the next session. How do I find enough people to figure that out? Meetup is a great way to go. It's an app where you can find people who just get together to find D&D &D campaigns. If you're even in a remotely decent sized city, that will exist and there will be a tabletop RPG group meetup. Every city I've moved to in the last five years has had one. You're gonna have a much harder roll of the dice there, to be perfectly honest, because there is a lot of different kinds of people showing up to those, or hell, there's enough people in my Discord server at this point. I'm sure if someone made a post, it's like, hey, I live in Washington state and I live in this town. Anyone who lives within an hour of me wants to do a campaign. 
I'd like to get one started. There's thousands of people in that Discord server, most of them American. You'll probably find some people interested. And at least you know they. They're, they're cool enough to like me. <laughs> Really the point of the latter half of this video is just tell people the stigma around D&D is gone. It's being played from sports teams to prisoners to nerds still. It's growing, it exists. Every franchise has a tabletop RPG game being put out because they know it's a growing huge market. There are online shows you can watch of people playing it with thousands if not tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of people watching them uh, like Critical Role because there's that kind of audience out there for it now. Major Hollywood celebrities are talking about how they get together with their other major celebrity friends and play tabletop RPGs. It's real, it exists, it's huge, and I'm trying to do my best to help promote it. And I truly believe if you have some friends you haven't talked to in a couple of months because y'all have been so busy, it could be a great way to reconnect. This is the way to get started if you haven't before. I find it to be easy, fun, and intuitive with their setup and walkthrough. Um, and I just would love to see more people, especially in my community, giving it a go. Check the Amazon affiliate link down there if you'd like to pick up the D&D starter set. I really do think it's a great way to get going. And uh, let me know in the comments down below your experience with Dungeons & Dragons, or if you have none, if you're looking to get started. Anyway, guys, like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace! Yay!